Musashi's in love, bro. This guy instant, man. Instant. <laughs> What is the up, people? It is Celeviathan, and today we're back with another reaction. But it's a bit of a special one because we're on the season finale of Orient. We're on episode 12. Man, oh man, it's been a journey, but not a very long one. <laughs> 12 episodes is kind of minuscule. But anyway, we're going to just do the quick recap. Um, Last episode felt a little bit like a season finale for some reason. Like they were completing up the arc and things like that. And they were kind of getting ready to leave. And they ended up leaving it actually. And part of me was like, okay, this really feels like a season finale. So what the hell are they going to do for this next episode? Episode. but um quick recap of that you know we had the um the obsidian goddess kind of still kind of doing her thing with Musashi kind of um, demonstrates her power and basically scares off Shiro and the rest of them now the goddess's power leaves his body and then Musashi goes through the sword trial again you know but one of the more interesting things was that um, Kojiro's dad Jasai was actually uh, had a connection with the obsidian goddess right he apparently stole the obsidian goddess a long time ago and then ran to Tatsuyama and Shiro knew this but Musashi and Kojiro did not know this right so Kojiro has a lot of stuff that he doesn't know about his dad he was focused a little bit on that last episode where he was like oh damn i don't know much about my dad and shit like that i wish i could kind of talk to him more but he ultimately accepts it and says you know it's time to just kind of go through with this and just go into the journey and just move ahead and move forward there's no reason to look back which could be a good thing and a bad thing but ultimately for a character like kojo it's it's definitely a good thing for him to move on and just move forward and stop looking back <laughs> um but that was basically what happened that episode we we learned that masashi when he did, got his kitetsu blade he had red aura obviously it wasn't like it, that was like i knew from like episode seven when they were doing that sword trial that he'd probably have red aura or something you know showing the protagonist powers and shit like that but it was, it was pretty obvious, but it was still pretty good because now we've kind of opened up a, a bit of a story and a mystery here as to like why Jisai stole the goddess, who's this obsidian goddess, what does Shiro and Anao know about it, and um, it really has got me excited for this. And I'd like to tell you guys that I'm really happy because this show actually got picked up for a season two. I'm a little bit shocked, a little bit because of like the animation wasn't always the best and I don't know how popular it really is with a lot of other people. I personally like the show a lot and it's a long running um, shonen series so part of me was always wondering like 12 episodes seems a little bit too little for a shonen series. So take it in, the se season 2 is coming out July 2022, that's like a couple of months from now. So. We're getting season two pretty early. I was I was actually thinking about reading the manga after I watched this episode here because I was like really kind of getting into the story here and I don't know if I could wait if the, if there was going to be a season two or not or if there was going to be an announcement. I'm going to wait for season two. I would love to read this as a manga. I think it would be a really good read as a manga and things like that, artwork and, and stuff like that. But I think I'm just going to stick with the, um, I, I guess, the original run of this show. And it sounds like uh, the, the third season and the fourth season, if, if the season two ends up being like really, really good, will kind of um, follow the same trend. Will they'll kind of um, do it in between like each anime season, I guess, or between anime seasons, like winter, summer, or spring, um, fall season. For this one, it's like winter, um, spring. No, no, winter, summer. So then we'll see We'll see it in, in July and stuff like that. So stay tuned because Orange is coming back pretty soon. Um, anyway, um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on the video. Turn on notifications down below so you know when I upload next. And also make sure you check out the Patreon link for full uncut reactions of this anime, other TV show and movies. Honestly, check it out. It's, it's only a dollar and it really is, is um, it doesn't hurt to just like look at it and see if it's for you. But with, th with that note though, we're gonna get started with um, the season finale of Orient. We're on episode 12. Let's go. Oh, it was really loud there for a second and just blasted in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> had to turn that shit down quick. <laughs> you know what's funny? This is the first time we're ever seeing actual plants and green and like greenery and like shrubs and shit like that in trees. Oh, 
そうそうこっそり手を離して驚かせちゃおうかここはしばらくあいつらに付き合ってやるかお前ら話すなよ話すなよ絶対話すなよ Is that, is that an Oni? <laughs> Green Oni octopus jars, bro. That looks like a freaking Venusaur. <laughs> no, not Venusaur. Victor Bell. Victor Bell. <laughs> But at least I want to actually see what he'll be able to do now because we haven't actually seen what his powers are. <laughs> Yo, I'm happy they're not pulling that bu bullshit background stuff they were doing with like the white red background thing to like avoid animation and stuff during fight scenes because now they're actually trying and I like it. So, what? What's that? What's Musashi's in love, bro. This guy, instant, man. Instant. <laughs> this seems like a pretty random point to introduce, introduce a new character like this. <laughs> like a really, really random point. <laughs> What's her importance, I wonder? Arigato. <laughs> きれいな人だな。え?もう大丈夫か?怪我は?え?うん。プリンセス?おぶちでしたか。じい。タイとはぐれた時はどうなることかと。こんな密林をうろついたりするもんですかね?いや、that <笑> お名前を伺いたいと姫様が申しております。自分から名乗りなさいよ。方は上杉連合さんが。Lord Nobuchi. Okay, so they're from a, another um Busi Bushi band called Saru Watari. Tenkawa-kemeno-oikusai-hase-san-jiro-beku. she also strong? Is she a Bushi too? Interesting. Tenkawa-kemeno-oikusai. So do they just make Kitetsu mounts out of Kitetsu? Is that what makes them like fly and things like that? I'm glad that got answered, you know, because I was a bit confused early on in the series when they were like flying and doing these weird powers and shit. <laughs> Maybe she's upset at the fact that she couldn't, um, what's it called, uh, defeat that only on her own even though she is a Bushi. You know what I mean? Yo, what's up with this girl? She her whole her whole demeanor completely changed. Dude, she doesn't talk at all. What is wrong with this girl, man? <laughs> Is there actually gonna be romance in this show in here? Okay, never mind. I didn't even notice what was going on here. These two are like falling off a cliff or some shit? Okay, now we're gonna see how powerful she is. What? お前の気絶すげえな。嫌な態度とって。いいけど。なんで急に喋ってくれる気になったんだ笑わない笑わない。あ、we're oh, close. This is the first time I've never heard of a word. Like that. さっきみたいに3人以上になると どこで会話に入っていけばいいのか。笑った。よかった。怒ってなくて。I <笑> like this character, man. 
Is she gonna join our band or something at some point? Because part of me was thinking that we would get more characters coming into the band, so maybe she might join. I bet you that's where like most of the 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 black wall is a kitchen. It's a kitchen. What the fuck? That thing's a kitchen. And it's just chilling there. <gasps> that thing is so freaking huge. It spans so far. They say it was the first Oni to appear in Hanamoto Hun- You're trying to tell me that's the first Oni? And it looks that plain? It's just a wall with legs? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. This show. Yo, it's Mr. Hanky the Christmas Poop. Howdy ho, cow! Gosh, you're looking swell! Nah, Mr. Hanky is on a whole nother godly level, man. <laughs> Over half of Hinomoto is, is taken over by this Kishin and people still worship this thing? Oh my god. いずれ日の元全土が飲み込まれてしまいます。日の元全土が飲み込まれる。我らが連合のある Oh my god, even Bushi have their own like top ranks, the five great generals? Yo, that's impressive. I can't wait to meet them. I feel like some Bushi were aware of it, while others kind of created the, um, the goal of becoming the king of Hinamoto as like fighting this Oni as like one of the goals. No shit! No shit, Kojiro! His dad wasn't going out fighting Kishin on his own, man! Yo, that is like such a major coincidence that they would meet the Osegi band and his father was also a part of the Osegi band. It's a very, very weird coincidence there. We're really meeting a lot of uh, potentially new characters here. I think that's what most of this episode was going to be setting up season two, you know? Oh no. Oh wow, wow, we got back to Takeda already, man. He's here. Everybody seems to be converging here. Holy shit. Wait, she also has the obsidian black crystals coming out of her? Or is that him? Oh, that's him giving her a message. Never mind. Wait, no. That's their actual boss. The obsidian eight? Oh, I knew it. I knew they had higher ranks in their in their rankings or whoever these guys are. Jingi no Arika 
Oh my god. But the crazy thing is Nanao doesn't have any obsidian powers or whatever. So I'm pretty sure all of them use the black aura or whatever. So I wonder how they're able to use it. That's crazy, man. Dude, that, that, that those small little ten, five minute sequence was so interesting. <laughs> Before I was a little bit happy last episode when Kojiro accepted it and moved on, but I think it's important that he needs to learn about his father here. And I think it's very important that he knows what clan his father was a part of. Because his father has a lot of secrets. Beautiful. <laughs> Okay, that was a great season finale. I know I was uh, kind of hated on it saying, oh, please, 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 no OVAs, please, please, no OVAs. But <laughs> it wasn't an OVA, obviously. But <laughs> I mean by o what I mean by OVA, I mean like a uh, throwaway episode that has nothing to do with the plot. But this episode was great because it set up a lot for season two to look forward to. So we know now that there is a ranking system with Bushi. So there are the five great Bushi, I guess you can say, right? And the Osegi leader guy is one of them. I'm thinking Takeda's one of them. I'm just assuming he is. Just it's just assumptions, whatever. Um, but yeah, it was it was really it was really interesting to see that. Um, we got to see like um, every other band and like some of the other characters or other bands that I feel like might come into focus a little bit later going forward into the story i feel like they they showed us this just to kind of get a taste of who these characters are in the moment just to know that hey yo these characters are going to matter at, at, at going forward now the osegi guy knew about the obsidian goddess being taken away i don't know if he's a bad guy or a good guy you know what i mean but he is that um michiru girl's dad so i don't know if he is a good or bad guy we'll have to see because he looks kind of sinister i'm not even gonna lie like looking at him he had all those tats the crazy gray hair, yo, he was, yo, he looked cool as hell. I'm not even gonna lie, he looked cool as shit. We didn't see his face, but he looked cool as shit. Um, that's the first season two to get further into. Um, but then, we got introduced to the Obsidian 8. And these guys here look like a great opposition to kind of deal with. You know, you know, these types of shows, you'd usually have like the Kishin being like the overall say all kind of enemies when it comes to this. But you also have to have like the people who are working with them, who are the sympathizer, who are kind of abusing their power, right? Because what they, what their goals seem to be is they want to protect the Kishin and they want to live with the Kishin and Hinamoto. They don't want to fight them like the Bushi do. So their goals directly conflict what Bushi do so that's why I was under that's why I understood why Shiro just kind of attacked the Bushi like there were nothing because I thought for him, like he was a Bushi himself but he's not he's part of something completely different the interesting thing is like I was saying is like how do they use this black aura I don't freaking know I would love to know how they use it um I want because technically they're all forsaken right so because they're all forsaken, they could use the black aura or they can use a different type of, or they, but there's a possibility that K Kitetsu blades or the crystals from Kitetsu, um, they draw upon a different type of power than the, than the black obsidian. I'm thinking that the black obsidian, you could still use like somewhat of a, of a different type of power, but not exactly Kitetsu power. You know what I mean? Something different. Because from what I saw, the guy had the aura around him, but he wasn't doing, he didn't have the rings. His rings were so sinister, you know, when he was fighting Shiro and all that stuff. So I cannot wait to see us get further into that. And please, I hope we get an explanation in season two. I hope. Because I really want to know what these Obsidian guys are and why they're so powerful. But they, they got me so interested now. I was so happy to know that Shiro had like, um, accomplices, you know, and also looking like there's a ranking system too. The last guy who was talking with the girl beside him, I think he's the boss, right? I thought the scary thing beside Nana was the boss, but nah, I think the guy who was holding the girl beside him talking was the boss. So we'll have to see what goes on going forward over there. But season two looks great because now we're getting into Kojiro's dad's type of backstory here and trying to figure out what the hell he, what the hell he's all about and things like that. And um, now we're actually, I, I didn't know if they were going to join in, in the, in the fight with the Kishin that they were doing, but it seems as though they're, they're on their own little mission to start with. So definitely going to be excited to see that going forward. 
But um, with that note, I'm going to end this video here. That was a great season finale. Um, stay tuned for July for when I start up season two of the show. I don't know if I'll start it right away or start posting it right away. It all depends on what I'm posting at that time and if I have time to post it. But I will do season two. The show's great. I love it. It's pretty great. Um, and when I first started watching it, there, it was, my interest in it wasn't as big as it is now. You know what I mean? Because the first couple of episodes were it took a little it took a lot to set up you know what i mean there was too much of a setup and it was kind of losing me for a little bit but it got me hooked right back in right after the episode five with the whole sugami stuff and i think that's when it started to really start to hook me over and i'm actually really excited for what the story has um going forward now so yeah um but with that note again see you guys around stay safe thank you guys for all the support you give and uh have a good night guys bye if it is night where you are if it's not, have a good morning, guys. See you later.